safety of GSU students and faculty is the most important priority. Find out what the GSU police is doing to protect the campus. Plus, find out how the recent sequestration budget cuts will affect GSU students. Also, recent college graduates face a challenge looking for jobs. Find out the latest news concerning unemployment rates. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Panther Report. I'm Richard Moy. And I'm Satara Coot. The Georgia House of Representatives approved lowering the GPA for HOPE grants from 3.0 to 2.0. This makes it easier for students to receive federal assistance and maintain eligibility in their collegiate career. Lawmakers estimate lowering the required GPA for HOPE grants will result in an additional five to eight million dollars per year in lottery revenue funding. The HOPE grant is given to students who are working towards a certificate or diploma at technical colleges. With recent concern regarding the safety of students across the nation, what actions are being taken by campus police to ensure safety at GSU? Reporter Jay Bell has more. With technology advancing, many students are beginning to disregard the importance of keeping themselves safe, as many of them are seen walking throughout this urban environment with their cell phones and other valuables visibly displayed. Sergeant Ware of the University Police Department declined to appear on camera. However, she did have some resourceful information. We currently have 71 police officers here at Georgia State. We are the largest police department university-wise here in the state of Georgia. This year we have not had one robbery because we've been getting the word out to stop. Restrain from using those cell phone devices and electronic devices while you're walking to and from different locations. Um, be aware of your surroundings at all times. Um, keep Georgia State University Police Department's emergency contact number in your cell phones, um, ready to dial um, when you're walking to and from different locations. The university police are spread out throughout campus in uniforms and plain clothes. Some students are also doing their part to stay safe. When it gets closer to evening, I really don't want to have anything out. They're actually really close by if I need them. I have it programmed in my phone so that if I ever need anything, I just click away. Safety remains the number one priority here at Georgia State University. With the help of both students and the university police, unsafe incidents can be prevented. Reporting from the Unity Plaza, Jay LaBelle, Panther Report. The Student Government Association passed a resolution that supports a new mandatory student fee. The green fee, which will charge each student $3, will go towards helping the campus become eco-friendly. The resolution will be given to the mandatory fee committee and will be considered for the upcoming school year. President Obama signed an order to begin the $85 billion budget cuts. The cuts will impact federal student aid and potentially hurt college students. Vanya Skabdanava gives us the latest details. Increasing fees is going to hurt people. On Friday, President Obama signed into law the Budget Control Act of 2011, or better known as the $85 billion budget cuts that will impact millions of college students. We shouldn't be making a series of dumb, arbitrary cuts to things that businesses depend on and workers depend on, like education and research. At Georgia State University, the budget cuts will impact diverse programs. I understand that there will be losses in funding for research um, at the university level. The federal work-study budget will be cut by 8.2 percent, or around $86 million. 890 fewer students will receive work-study jobs that will help with their education. As for federal student loans, the direct subsidized and direct unsubsidized loans will increase fees with 1 percent on the principal of the loan. Direct PLUS loans will increase by 4%. With the budget cuts, there is a potential negative impact going forward. There is concern that the sequester accompanied with you know, other events abroad and, and, and here could tip us back into a recession. Now since we're already in 2013, the budget cuts will not have a huge impact until 2014. Reporting from downtown Atlanta, Vanya Skurdanova, Panther Report. Southern Telecom, a subsidiary of Southern Company, announced last week an expansion of its agreement with Georgia State. The company completed the installation of the university's northern fiber optic ring. This serves as an extension of the southern fiber optic ring that Southern Telecom created several years ago. This will connect 13 additional buildings to the campus network. The company says with this new fiber optic ring added, the university has significant network capacity to meet its student and faculty needs well into the future. 
Landing a job in today's society is getting harder and harder for college students every year. Reporter Stephanie Chanak has more on this story. Upcoming GSU graduates will be facing the harsh realities of the high unemployment rate in Atlanta. The challenge, I think, isn't that you can't find a job, it's that you can't find a job in your field. I know people who've been out of school for a year and a half and they still haven't, either they don't have a job at all or they haven't found anything in their field, so I guess that's when it calls for being creative. The Signal reported a survey in 2011 that showed 50% of GSU graduates landed jobs after graduating, but only 32% of them had jobs within three months of graduation. A little lower than I had expected. 50% uh, is, uh, if that is the odd, I'll take it. Um, one in two people getting a job after college, that's pretty scary, and only a third of those finding their dream job, that kind of frightens me. It sounds believable and I've been preparing for this and the fact that I'm probably may be unemployed after graduation, so. With available jobs at an all-time low and the unemployment rate getting increasingly high, job hunting is getting more and more competitive. You need to be working in your field as an intern or a volunteer or some sort of project, part-time, etc junior year, if not even sophomore year, and senior year. I'm on Panther Career Net all the time looking for um, jobs that apply to me. Um, I just had my cover, a cover letter reviewed today and my resume, so it definitely helps out a lot. To get a head start on life after graduation, be sure to stop by the Career Services Center. Stephanie Chanock, Panther Report. Coming up next. New pro-life bill was recently proposed at the Capitol building. Stay tuned for more details. Or just new tax law eliminates the birthday tax you pay on your car every year. Question is, will this allow you to have your cake and eat it too? Find out. Good morning, Atlanta. Does it feel like your alarm clock goes off earlier every morning? Do you have trouble waking up? Have you seen a doctor about this? If not, you can get your daily dose of caffeine at Saxby's. A memorial was held last Wednesday at GSU University Housing for 21-year-old Chanel Little. Little lost control of her vehicle while traveling on Highway 166 near Douglasville and was killed on impact. Little was a resident assistant at the University Commons. The Society of Professional Journalists Regional Media Conference begins March 15th through the 17th at GSU. Guest speakers will include top journalists and radio personalities from Atlanta. The event will be held at the Student Center. Free workshops will be available on the first day of the conference. For more details and information, visit MediaAtlanta.com. The gun control issue is heating up in the Georgia legislature, and a new gun bill has been introduced that could affect college campuses. Reporter Miriam Trigueras has more on that story. The Georgia legislature has yet another gun bill to vote on. House Bill 512 will allow concealed weapons in churches, bars, and on college campuses. The Georgia Board of Regents spoke out against this bill on the day of its hearing. Chancellor Hank Huckabee said in a statement, In my position, I believe strongly that allowing our students to carry weapons on our campuses will not increase their personal safety, but instead reduce it. Since 2010, the Board of Regents supports the current concealed carry law, which allows licensed gun holders to keep their weapons locked in their car in institution parking lots like Georgia State. But once a gun holder leaves their car, no weapon is allowed on any campus. 
Chief of Georgia State Police Carlton Mullis says the police department supports the Board of Regents. The Georgia State student government leaders also support the current law in place. The university actually stands side by side with us. The chancellor of the Board of Regents, University System of Georgia, he is in favor of current law. So are we, so is Georgia State University. GSU students seem to have mixed reviews on concealed weapons on campus. It would be a good thing to have concealed weapons on campus because it's not a necessity. Like things happen wherever you go. You have good and bad, no matter where you at. But if you add more weapons to the situation, you know what I'm saying, it's going to add more violence to it. With this being an open campus, students carrying a gun, they're more able to protect themselves from random people trying to harass them. At the moment, the bill has only been approved by the House Committee of Public Safety and Homeland Security. Reporting from Georgia State University, Miriam Chigueros, Panther Report. Another gun bill that is being proposed is House Bill 117. The Georgia House of Representatives wants to ease rules that prevent the mentally ill from owning firearms. House Bill 117 would allow people who have sought voluntary inpatient treatment to apply for a gun license. The bill would also allow Georgia officials to check if the person received involuntary treatment. The controversial pro-life bill was recently proposed by State Representative Jay Neal. Stephanie Joy has more on the controversial bill. State Representative Jay Neal recently proposed a pro-life bill called the Ethical Treatment of Human Embryos Act in a hearing at the Capitol, where he said, I think it's important that we protect the life of the human embryo. Neal's view on the usage of human embryos is limited to reproductive purposes only, like the successful birth of Louise Joy Brown in 1978, also known as the world's first test tube baby. The team who delivered her pioneered what we know today as in vitro fertilization, or IVF. What Neil doesn't want is animal-human hybrids, like in the movie Splice. It was probably the best movie theater experience I had because everyone in the theater completely turned, turned against the movie and just made jokes at it really loudly. Um, it just seemed so outlandish and like it didn't seem to make sense in a realistic world, I guess. Opposers to the bill say it isn't necessary and is vaguely written, which could hinder cutting-edge medical research happening in Georgia, like at Georgia State, known as a leading research university in Atlanta, which just recognized 12 professors for their outstanding records in research. Governor Nathan Deal announced that Baxter International is going to move its new biopharmaceutical plant near I-20 East of Atlanta. The plant will benefit the growth of our biosciences industries as well as employment. I'm Stephanie Joy for Panther Report. Governor Nathan Deal fired six DeKalb County board members amid allegations that the school could lose accreditation. This could not only affect students in DeKalb County, but the city of Atlanta as well. Over 400 applicants have applied for the vacant positions. A five-member panel was appointed by the governor to interview candidates for each position. DeKalb County Schools, which are accredited by the Southern Association of College, Colleges and Schools, was put on probation last December. A decision can be expected within the next few weeks about who the governor will choose to fill the positions. A new tax on the purchase of vehicles in Georgia could eliminate the birthday tax residents pay each year. Reporter Anna Nardi has more on what incentives Georgians can expect to receive. Georgia entered into a new era this week by eliminating the annual birthday tax you pay on vehicles you own in Georgia and replacing it with a new tax. This leaves Georgia residents wondering how the new tax works and if it will save them money. As reported, the ad volum tax, also known as the birthday tax, that comes every year is going away. But there's more. The new law also eliminates all state and local sales tax on new and used car purchases in Georgia. As of March 1st, the new law requires Georgia residents buying a car to pay a one-time 6.5% tax up front based on vehicle's fair market value plus a $20 tax fee. If you bought a car anytime between January 1st, 2012 and February 28th, 2013, you can pay either the birthday tax or the new tax. And if you bought a car before 2012, you will have to continue to pay the birthday tax. Eight students seemed pleased with the new tax. But I think it provides me an opportunity to cut down on costs of having a car. You know? I think it's great, because then if your car is not worth that much, that amount that you have to pay originally is not that much either. So yeah, I think, I think the tax or the new law is great. 
If you qualify for the new tax, you will pay $20 yearly for your tag after paying the one-time tax. Most purchasers will pay less than they did before on most basic transactions. Reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, this is Anna Nardi from Panther Report. The TSA's new policy to allow passengers to carry small knives, golf clubs, and hockey sticks on planes is causing backlash amongst some airline companies. A TSA spokesman said that the items presented no longer danger and that gun-carrying pilots, federal air marshals, and airline crew members trained in self-defense provide security against the items. Mark Zuckerberg announced a redesign to Facebook's newsfeed. The social media company said users can expect bigger logos, larger thumbnails, and better quality pictures. The new design will begin to appear in news feeds over the next few weeks. Stay tuned to Panther Report for your sports update. Welcome and thanks for tuning in to GSTV. We are the Executive Board members of Student Government Association and my name is Marcus Kernis and your President. I'm Taylor Briggs, the Executive Vice President. My name is Christian Hill, Vice President of Student Services. My name is Adriana Michoni, I'm your Vice President of Academic Affairs. My name is Theo Mohamuza, I'm your Vice President of Budget and Finance. I'm Danielle Kleinman and I am your Vice President of Public Relations. My name is Jarrell Abrams and I am your Vice President of Student Life. Are you worried about your schedule getting in the way of the educational and cutting edge seminars that Georgia State University has to offer? Well, we have great news for you. Starting this semester, these seminars will be available online thanks to GSTV and a partnership from us here at Student Government Association. From the prospect of resume building to the distinctive keynote speakers, we know that these seminars will help enrich your student experience. Thanks for tuning in, and remember, our student government student meetings will be broadcast live on GSTV every other Thursday at 7 p.m. Go, Go Panthers! Panthers! Good evening, I'm Sean White with your Panther Report Sports Update. In GSU Sports News, freshman Garrett Ford pitched eight shutout innings, and Chase Ratfield had four RBIs as the GSU baseball team defeated George Mason 12-3 at the GSU baseball complex last Saturday. Georgia State improved its record to 10 and 6 overall and 1 and 1 in the CAA. First year pitcher Garrett Ford said, All my pitches were working and I was able to locate where I wanted for the most part. Sophomore third baseman Caden Bailey had a single and a triple to extend his hitting streak to 18 games. Last Saturday, the GSU men's tennis team rallied from losing the doubles point in singles play to earn a 4 to 3 victory over Sunbelt Conference rival Louisiana Lafayette. Senior Lucas Santa Anya played after losing the first set to win the second set and win the third set at the number three spot. Junior Robert Scorsese then received a match point during the third set at the number four spot to win his match against Louisiana's Jared Winan and clinch the win for GSU. Head coach Gerard Barthel said, I thought Lucas and Robert gave great effort today. We're going to take the momentum of this win into a tough stretch of our schedule. In local sports, Atlanta's Mayor Kasim Reed and Falcons owner Arthur Blank have agreed to financial terms for a newly designed $1 billion retractable roof stadium to replace the 20-year-old Georgia Dome to keep the home games in downtown Atlanta. Mayor Kasim Reed said the city would pay $200 million of construction costs through bonds backed by the city's hotel motel tax. Home Depot co-founder and Falcons owner Arthur Blank will provide $800 million and be responsible for construction cost overruns. The modern stadium will help the city compete for all major events such as the Super Bowl and college football's new championship game. In other sports news, the New York Knicks received terrible news last Saturday. Amari Stoudemire will be out six weeks for a right knee procedure. Stoudemire didn't play the first two months of the season while healing from arthroscopic surgery on his left knee. In 29 games this season, the 10-year NBA veteran averaged 14.2 points and five rebounds while shooting 57% from the field. Head coach Mike Woodson said, it's a major loss to what we're trying to do, but we're going to have to, to wait on him and continue our climb. Tiger Woods shot a 19 under to win the WGC Cadillac Championship by two strokes. By winning this event, Woods now has 76 PGA Tour wins and seven Cadillac titles for his career. Woods had 27 birdies in 72 holes and only took 100 putts for the whole week. 
Tiger can return to the, uh, being the number one ranked golfer in the world with a win in two weeks at Bay Hill. Bernard Hopkins is now the oldest boxer to earn a major title after receiving a 12-round unanimous decision over Tavares Cloud to win the IBF Light Heavyweight Championship. Hopkins connected on 169 of 417 punches, landing punches to Cloud's face, eventually making cut above his left eye. Hopkins, competing in his 19th title fight, improved to 53-6-2 and six and two in the main event of an eight-fight card at the Barclays Center. At the end of the fight, Hopkins commented saying, it feels good, it feels really good. I'm going to Junior's restaurant and I'm going to have cheesecake. I'm Sean White and this has been your Panther Report Sports Update. Thank you for joining us. That's all for this week's Panther Report News. Don't forget to check us out on Channel 91 in University Housing and on our YouTube page, GSTV Panther Report, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Make sure to like us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash pantherreport. I'm Richard Moy. And I'm Satara Koot. Have a good week.